Today is the 4th of April 2022. My name is David Hickson and in today's market update I'm going to be taking a quick look at the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq which have been doing pretty much exactly what the cycles have been leading us to expect them to do and then I'm going to be discussing the Nifty. We've had many requests to discuss the Nifty over the past few weeks and months. I think it's been a couple of months since I last did an update on the Nifty. Even if you don't trade the Indian markets I would encourage you to stay tuned for the discussion on the Nifty because there's an interesting demonstration of how we can actually apply the insight that a Hearst Cycles analysis gives us to making informed trading decisions. So let's start with the S&P 500 and as you will know from watching previous market update videos this is one of the analyses that we've been tracking with a very prominent probably at least 54 month cycle trough forming in March 2020 and the recent trough that has formed at the end of February or in early March is an 18 month cycle trough according to this analysis. So the interesting things to look out for here are of course an 80 day trough coming in May, then a 20 week cycle trough which should form in July or in early August and then eventually this is a little bit staggered but as you can see there is a 40 week cycle trough expected in early 2023. So let's zoom in and take a look at what's actually happening with this analysis and see what it is telling us to expect in the near term. So the interesting thing about the S&P 500 is that it formed a lower low in the final week of February. I discussed this in last week's market update video. When we take a look in a moment at the Nasdaq, of course the Nasdaq has a lower price that formed in early March and so the trough is a little bit displaced in the Nasdaq. But if we measure the number of bars from the lower price in the S&P 500 then you will see that as of today there have been 39 days that have elapsed since that potential 18 month cycle trough which means that in the S&P 500 we are therefore expecting as can be seen at the foot of the chart a 40 day cycle trough to form in this market at the moment. Now of course we could argue that this spike downwards was simply caused by the invasion of Ukraine. I think that is the day on which the Ukraine war started and so the correct position for that cycle trough might indeed be in the same position as it is in the Nasdaq which is over here in the first or even possibly here in the second week of March. Nevertheless, this is the analysis that we are looking at in the S&P 500 and so we need to bear in mind that the exact position of that 18 month cycle trough might need to be displaced a little bit. If we display the composite model line that gives an indication of what this analysis is actually telling us to expect which is of course a very bullish move out of that 18 month cycle trough and we will have the dip down into the 40 day cycle trough which potentially formed on Friday although it's much too early to tell for sure and then of course we're going to get a continued rise and here is the next trough to be on the lookout for which is the 80 day cycle trough expected in about the second week of May. If we take a look at the 20 day cycle FLD then we can see that there was a messy sequence of interactions over here which again calls into question the positioning of the 18 month cycle trough at this low and might raise the possibility that a better position for that trough would be here or here. The 40 day cycle trough is usually expected to occur below the 20 day cycle FLD. In other words under normal circumstances we would expect price to cross down below the 20 day cycle FLD and then form the 40 day cycle trough an equal distance below that 20 day cycle FLD. However there are several reasons why we probably would not expect that in the current situation. One being the large magnitude of this trough probably 18 months because we are following the trough of such a big magnitude cycle. We are expecting quite a lot of bullishness in this market and so it is quite possible that price won't come down below that 
20-day cycle FLD or might not reach the target below it in order to form the 40-day cycle. The other reason why we might not expect price to come down below the 20-day cycle FLD is the fact that we have a question mark surrounding the exact position of that 18-month cycle trough. If price finds support at the level of the 20-day cycle FLD at the moment, then we will still have this question mark as to whether this is a 20-day or a 40-day cycle trough that has formed in the markets. Some of those questions are potentially answered better by taking a look at the NASDAQ. But before we do, let's quickly take a look at the other analysis in the S&P 500, which is still a valid analysis that positions the 20-week cycle trough at this low here in the final week of February. This analysis has the 18-month cycle trough over here in the very beginning of October, I believe it is. And so according to this analysis, price is currently bouncing out of a 20-week cycle trough instead of an 18-month cycle trough. This is still a possible analysis as has been discussed in previous market update videos. There is a slight difference in terms of our expectation, which can be viewed by taking a look at the composite model line. In particular, of course, the big difference here is the fact that we are not so bullish because of the fact that the 18-month cycle trough potentially formed at the beginning of October. As you can see, the price action is not nearly so bullish, and we are looking at price coming down into a 40-day cycle trough over here. We still have the 80-day cycle trough to look out for in early May, So it is worth bearing in mind that if the markets do not continue to exhibit strong bullishness, it is possible that this analysis might be the one that is in play. Here is that same analysis that I have presented in previous market update videos in the NASDAQ with the 18-month cycle trough over here in early October, and this trough is therefore a 20-week cycle trough. As you can see, and as I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, this trough is slightly later in the NASDAQ, being positioned on the 14th or 15th of March. And so as a result, when we take a look at the 20-day cycle FLD, the trough that we are expecting to form now is, of course, only the 20-day cycle trough. The 20-day cycle trough we expect to form where price finds support at the level of the FLD. It is certainly expected to form round about now. It is possible that it formed on Friday of last week, but it is much too early to tell. If we take a look at the other analysis in the NASDAQ, which positions the 18-month cycle trough over here on the 15th of March, then we have exactly the same situation as we had in the S&P 500 in terms of the increased bullishness that is expected because of the fact that an 18-month cycle trough has just formed in the markets. The big difference here is that, of course, that trough is later, being on the 15th of March, as opposed to in the final week of February. And because of that, the trough that is expected to form around about now is, of course, the 20-day cycle trough. And the next trough to be looking out for will only be a 40-day cycle trough over here towards the end of April or beginning of May. Now let's take a look at the Nifty. And it has been a couple of months since I last looked at the Nifty. We've had a lot of requests for the Nifty. There's been a big increase of interest in Hearst Cycles in India, which is a wonderful thing. So this is the analysis of the nifty and it has similar features of course to our analysis of the u.s markets because all stock markets around the world move with a great deal in common that is hearst's principle of commonality and so in particular we have a 54 month cycle trough that probably occurred in march of 2020 Although, again, I should point out, as I have mentioned in previous market updates, that the outbreak of the pandemic at that time possibly distorted the position of that trough. We were only expecting a 54-month cycle trough to occur a couple of months later in the U.S. markets. And so we get a similar distortion potentially happening in the Nifty. The interesting thing to consider when we're taking a look at a market that is not a U.S. market is whether the wavelengths in the Nifty or in any other market outside of the U.S. are the same as the wavelengths that are found in the United States markets. 
Hearst, of course, performed his original research on stock prices in the US, and there is no guarantee that the same cycles are influencing other markets around the world. You will notice if you take a look at the recent wavelengths here at the bottom right hand side of the chart that we are indeed seeing slightly different wavelengths to the wavelengths that we see in the US markets. Instead of a 54 month cycle, we are seeing a 68 month cycle. And instead of an 18 month cycle, we're seeing a 25 month cycle. And so it is certainly possible that we have slightly different wavelengths that are influencing this market. Now, I haven't built what is called a custom nominal model for the Nifty because the Sentient Trader software will, in fact, allow a good deal of variation in the cycle wavelengths. What's more important in terms of performing an analysis is not that the wavelengths end up being the correct values when you average them, but that the structure of the market or the structure of the analysis in terms of the synchronized troughs all fitting together for all the different cycles, it's more important that that is correct than that the average wavelengths of the cycles are correct. And so in performing the analysis, the focus is on getting that structure correct performing a good analysis, in other words, and then afterwards we can take a look at the average wavelengths that have resulted. There is quite a lot to discuss there, but we're not going to be doing that in today's video. All that we're looking at today is simply an update in terms of what is happening to the Nifty at the moment. And if we zoom in, and let's just turn off these semicircles, you can see that the Nifty has also, according to this analysis, formed an 18-month cycle trough over here at the beginning of March. That makes a lot of sense. Because of the principle of commonality, we do expect markets around the world to experience big magnitude troughs at about the same time. The fact that we found a fairly clear 18-month cycle trough at the same time in the Nifty as we have found in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ raises the chances that this trough was in fact an 18-month cycle trough as opposed to a 20-week cycle trough, which is the alternative analysis we've been considering in the US markets. One of the big question marks around that 18-month cycle trough is, of course, the length of it. As you can see, if we measure the number of bars or days that have elapsed since the 54-month cycle trough in March of 2020, you can see that there were 713, 714 days that elapsed, making that a 23 and a half month wave of the potential 18 month cycle. The average length of an 18 month cycle is 17.9 months. And so that is a fairly long 18 month cycle. There are some Hearst Cycles analysts that might even say it is much too long to be considered to be an 18 month cycle. But as mentioned, the cycles that are influencing the Nifty might be of a slightly different wavelength to the cycles that are influencing the US markets. That is one consideration. Another consideration is the fact that the pandemic might have caused a distortion and therefore brought about a slightly misplaced trough in March of 2020. Nevertheless, this analysis looks very reasonable and certainly gives us a good clear structure to the markets. We have a, a nice clear 40-week cycle trough that formed over here in April of last year and the general M shape that we expect to see forming in the markets is nice and clear and so we can say with some confidence that this is probably a trough of the 18-month cycle that has formed at the beginning of March. If we display a composite model line that results from this analysis, you can see the expected path that price will be taking, which is of course bouncing out of the 18-month cycle trough over here, forming an 80-day cycle trough over here towards the end of May, and then we have the 20-week cycle trough over here in August, and off to the right-hand side, Beyond the end of this chart in early 2023, we will see price declining down into a 40-week cycle trough. Let's zoom in and consider how we might have taken some trading decisions on the basis of this analysis. It is all very well, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, to discuss at length the analysis that we are seeing in the markets, but how do we make sensible trading decisions? 
Well, one way that I find very useful is to track the way in which price interacts with the FLD. Now, of course, this is the 20-day cycle FLD, and I often speak about the 20-day cycle FLD because it gives us a good time frame in terms of these weekly market update videos. You could be tracking the FLD of pretty much any cycle. There are some differences between the different cycles, but I won't be going into that here. But the sequence of interactions between price and the FLD is a fairly reliable one. And so let's speak about how we might have considered taking some trading decisions in the Nifty. First of all, we need to assume that on the basis of an analysis, we were expecting an 18-month cycle trough to form. As I've mentioned in many of these market update videos, it is very unusual to be able to catch the exact formation of that trough. It would certainly be very unusual to be able to jump into a long trade as the trough is forming because we need to see evidence in the price action that that trough has formed. The first piece of evidence would have come when price came up to the 20-day FLD and succeeded in crossing above it, which it did over here in the second week of March. Now, if you were a particularly aggressive trader, you might have observed price coming up above the FLD and then perhaps set a long entry at the level of that high price that it formed above the FLD with perhaps a tight stop below the FLD. And that could have provided you with a potential entry point. But that would be a very aggressive trade and you would have to be very confident in your analysis in order to trade in that manner. If you were not that aggressive in your trading, then that would only be the first piece of evidence that you are looking for. In other words, price crossing above the level of the FLD. The second piece of evidence that you would look for would be price achieving or almost achieving its target generated as a result of crossing above this FLD. That target in this case was a level of 17495, which you can see price almost achieved. I think it missed it, but only by a very small amount. 17495 was the target that was generated. And when price almost achieved that target, that is the second piece of evidence that indeed we have a trough of the expected magnitude that is formed in the markets. Then you would turn your attention to the 20-day cycle trough, which you can see is this nest of lows over here. A nest of lows is simply an arrangement of many of the circles and whiskers above one another. A circle is the next expected time for a particular cycle to form a trough in the markets. The lines to each side of the circle, which we call the whiskers, are the reasonable range of time in which that trough could be expected to occur. The result of the fact that the troughs are synchronized in financial markets causes these circles and whiskers to line up above one another and form what we call nests of lows. And so a week ago, we would have been expecting a 20-day cycle trough to form in the market. The third piece of evidence that you would have considered when making trading decisions in the Nifty would have been that you expect price to find support at the level of the 20-day cycle FLD at the time that the 20-day cycle trough is expected to form in the market following a trough of at least 80-day magnitude. That is the third piece of evidence that provides us with confidence in terms of the fact that the 18-month cycle trough has formed. At that point, you could certainly have set a stop entry at the level of the high of last Monday's price, and that would have provided a less aggressive entry opportunity into this long trade. Now, there are some traders that would say, but you seem to have missed a large amount of the move. Of course, that is true. However, this being an 18-month cycle trough that has just formed, missing the first three weeks roughly of the move shouldn't really reduce our profit potential very much when we take a look at the bigger picture. I do hope that you found this market update useful and interesting. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below the video. I look forward to hearing from you.